Hi everyone and welcome to this broadcast. Welcome wherever you are today. Welcome and I appreciate you being here today. Uh, I pray that your life is going into the right direction. Even if it's not going the way you had planned it, but I pray that God will see you through in the midst of your situation right now. I pray that the hands of the Lord will continue to guide you, continue to lead you, and in such a time as this. So welcome and thank you for joining Thank you wherever you are today. I believe that you will receive something great today. I believe that there's a special blessing, a special anointing is coming your way. So thank you for taking the time to uh, spend uh, this moment with me where you will be encouraged. The purpose of me being here today is to encourage you, is to, is to help you, is to give you uh, the, 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 the necessary encouragement to move on. My name is Dr. Daniel Domini, and I believe that there is something supernatural will come your way. Something supernatural. Somebody say supernatural. Something supernatural will come your way because God is a supernatural God. He is a God that operates above the natural and reaching out to the natural. So there is something for you in store today. Today, we'll continue with uh, the series. We have two more lessons to go. Uh, the mountaintop and the valley low experience. We'll continue today with the mountaintop and valley low experience. Remember, your situation is not out of reach. This is what we'll start with. Your situation is not out of reach. What you will have to do is to lift up your eyes and look right there behind you. There is the ram in the bush. God will provide. You climbing up. You going up. Where are you today in the in the process of climbing? In the process of the mountaintop and the valley low experience. Are you at the top now? Are you close to the top or are you descending? Are you falling down? Are you, are you at the bottom? Are you in the, in, in, in the valley? Where are you exactly at this very moment? Some of you may know exactly where you are. Some of you don't even know where you are today. But I want to help you today. If you are climbing, keep on climbing. Don't, don't, don't quit. Don't give up. Keep on pushing. Keep on persevering. It's only those who persevere till the end. Those are the people that will be rewarded. Those who persevere where? To the end. You have to go all the way. Those are the people that will be rewarded. So I'm encouraging you to keep on persevering. Remember, every time you are persevering, every time you are pushing your way through, every time you, you, you going forth, you have to Remember that your situation is not out of reach. As much as you think and as you feel that is, your situation is difficult, it's, 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 it's unbearable, it's, it's hard, but you have to understand that it is not out of reach. Oh, you have to keep on pushing. John 20 and verse 27 says, then said, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hands and put into my side. Stop doubting and believe. The encouragement is that, that Jesus told Thomas, as Thomas was doubting, Thomas says, I know you said you are the Christ after his resurrection. I know you said you are the Christ, but unless I touch you, unless I put my finger in your palm of your hand, or unless I put my finger in your side, in your wound, I will not accept that. And that's why the name doubting, 
Thomas. But the truth is Thomas was not the only one who was doubting. All the other disciples were doubting because when the ladies went first to the grave, they went there to the tomb and they didn't see him because they met with the angel. And the angel said, why are ye looking for the living among the dead? Jesus was risen. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. The tomb was empty. So they came back and they told the disciples, but the disciples doubted. The disciples didn't believe them. The disciples said, let's go and see for ourselves. So they all went back to the tomb and they saw an empty grave. They saw an empty tomb. Why? Because they didn't believe, but they had to see for themselves. You see, faith is not see for yourself. Faith is what God says, I believe it, and that settles it. I don't understand everything. I don't understand why he have to put it this way, but he said it, so I believe it, I accept it, and it will work for me. So Thomas, doubting God, doubting Christ, he said, now Jesus said to him, Thomas, come here, put your finger in my hands. Put it. He said, now reach out, reach out and put your finger in my side and feel for yourself that there's a wound right there. Look at it. Now stop doubting and believe. Your situation is not out of reach. We have to stop doubting and believe. See, doubt will hold you back from believing. There's a difference between doubt and fear. See, fear will activate your faith and will help you to believe. But doubt will remove you from faith and will help you not to believe. And that's why he said, stop doubting. Because you're doubting so much that you don't, you don't think it's possible. You don't think it will happen. He said, stop doubting. And now you have to start believing. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. He said, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out of that, that you can endure it. So whatever temptation is coming your way, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. In other words, whatever temptation is uh, coming your way, is that God saw that you could handle it. Whatever you are experiencing is because God knows that you can handle it. So even if you feel pressed, even if you feel cornered at some point, you feel like you can't, you can't, you can't press through, you have to understand that God knows that you can handle it. He knows that you can he knows that you are able to do it. He knows that you have the strength, you have the potential, you have the capability, and you also have the potential to handle it. That's why he is allowing you to go through. He is allowing you to experience this because at the end, you will come out victorious and you will come out stronger. So when you are experiencing this, he said that this is common to man. This is what man needs to experience. This is what the human being needs to experience in order for the human being to live a godly life. You have to experience this. He will not. This is what a, he is a faithful God. He will keep his word. And he said he will not allow 
you to be tempted beyond measure, beyond what you can bear, beyond what you can handle, beyond what you can carry. He will not allow that to happen. So anytime you're going through a situation, understand that God says he will not allow this situation to hold you back. He will not allow something that is heavier than you. He will not because he cares for you. He loves you. He is a faithful God. So what? Ever you are handling right now, it's because you can handle it. Hallelujah. It's because you can handle it. Because God already provided an outcome in the temptation. So he said, don't worry if you are going through a temptation right now. The outcome is already there. So all you have to do is just carry on. It's just Persevere is just pushed through. Oh my God, victory is so awesome. Victory is so awesome. When you want a victory, oh my God, it is awesome. When you persevere, when you keep on pushing. Have you noticed that all the things that most of you, most of you have experienced or accomplished, it is because you persevere? It's because you keep on pushing until the end? For those of you that have been in school, you know how wonderful it is to be graduated. You keep going, you keep going. Now you have, you have to write papers after papers. You have to study nights after nights. Some of you, you're crying. Some of you are even crying right now because you're trying to get a certain degree and it is overwhelming, but you're not giving up. Some, of, some, some, some will fall out, some give up, but the, 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 the reward is waiting on you. Because all you want to do, you want to experience, is to walk. You want to walk and you, know, and you want to hear the wonderful graduation music. And you want, to, you, you want to be there together with all the graduates. And you want to also reach out and receive your diploma or your degree. And that is a wonderful feeling. That gives you a sense of accomplishment. That gives you a sense of victory because that will elevate you. You can move on to the, not, to the next class. You can move on to the next job, to the next position. You can move on. You get, you get a better pay, paying job. You can move on. You get a, another title. It is a sense of accomplishment because the reward was right there waiting on you. Now, here's what you have to understand. Whether you graduate or not, the reward is still there. So, and it's up to you to reach out to that reward. It's up to you to get that degree. Nobody can hold that degree from you, uh, keep it from you, but you. You can reach out, and you have to reach out because it is right there. The solution is right there at the end. But it's up to you to keep on pushing so that you can get it. It's up to you to keep on fighting so you can get it. Oh, folks, fight for what you need. Fight. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't, 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 don't quit. Fight. I'm here to encourage somebody to fight. Say it with me. Fight. Hallelujah. Your situation is not out of reach. So you're going to fight for it. Come on, somebody. You're going to fight for it. It's right that Jesus said, reach out and stop doubting. Start believing. Believe that you can. Oh, you got to believe in God, but you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in the ability and the potential that God placed in you. Believe in the potential that God gave you. Believe in the ability that God gave you. Believe in the knowledge that he gave you. Believe in it and keep on pushing. Keep on going. Don't degrade yourself. Say, I can do it. I can do all things. I can do all things. The focus and the key word is not all things, but the focus and the key word is through Christ. Oftentimes we look at and see and focus on all things. I, I, I can do all things. No, I can do all things through Christ. So I believe in my ability because of what Christ did. So I boast in Christ and I act upon the word. So when the word says that you will be tempted, but he also provide a way out. Oh, hallelujah. He also will help you to escape what you are going through right now. You will overcome. He made a way for you already. 
So all you have to do is keep on pressing. But the way, in order for you to get to where you need to be, you have to understand that there is a way out there. You have to keep on pressing in order to reach that avenue to take off, to exit that avenue. And oftentimes you want to exit, but you haven't reached yet. And that's why many of us blaming, we used to blame each other. Remember back in the days when, when there were no GPS? Uh, we had a map or you had to Google map it and, and then write all the direction and the greatest victim of all time was the person right next to you. It's either your husband or your wife, your daughter or your son or their little uncle because you rely on them to read everything for you. I feel so old. Jesus have mercy. You rely on the person next to you to read, okay, what, what's next? And, 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 and you, the highway is coming, the exit is coming, and now here you are, you need to turn, and they didn't tell you on time, and now you pass your exit. Or you turn before you reach the exit. So you have to go all around, around and come back. Even today with, the, with, with all this technology, we still get lost and still turn around and around and around. Why? Because we got off prematurely. And we got because the, 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 the help, the solution is on the next avenue. But because we are so caught up, because we are tired of the pressure, the, the pressure that we are experiencing, we get up prematurely. And because we get up prematurely, we miss the action. We miss where God is leading us. And then what we're trying to do when we miss where God is trying to lead us, we try to sugarcoat it. We try to make a solution, a makeshift solution. Said, oh, but God worked this way too. Oh, but God, maybe, maybe God is trying to teach us something. No, he's not. You miss your exit. Now go start all over again because he's not there. Oh, but maybe God is working. And, and it's just like in relationship. People start dating each other. And they date in the day, and, and, and then and they, don't, they, they break up because things didn't work out. And you know what he said? Uh, maybe God brought us together for a reason. Maybe he had a reason, uh, even though we're not together. But maybe we can stay friends. There's a reason why. No, 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 no. There's no reason. You dated the wrong person. You shouldn't date, be dating that person in the first place. And now all of a sudden, God, God, brought, God, God said, don't get me into your mess. Don't get me into this. I have nothing to do with this. So uh, uh, how, how, how? Tell me, tell me, come on. How in the world you, you will bring God in this? You find a person that you lost it out to, now you're dating, you realize that mm, it's not what I thought. And now, oh, God brought us. God, no, God said, no, don't get me into your mess. Oftentimes, you want to get God. God said, you sometimes you should see God face. God said, mm -mm, mm -mm, not me. No, don't get me into that. Remember, I said, no, mm -mm, not me, Papa. Mm -mm, not me. Why, why are you getting me into your mess? You need to go back because you get up prematurely. You get into a relationship prematurely, but you can get out of a relationship prematurely too, and you miss all what you're supposed to miss. So all you got to do, you better get off at the right exit because he said that he already provided. He's all, he already provided the outcome, and the outcome is waiting on you. So you sitting here waiting on the outcome for God to speak. God said, I, I already spoken. I've already spoken. Now the outcome is right there. So go and get into the answer. So, so one thing we, we must understand, if we're going up, that we have to lift our eyes because the scripture says that Abraham, he lifted up his eyes and he saw the ram in the thicket, got caught up in the thicket, and he went after the ram. But the first thing he had to do, he had to lift up his eyes. No, 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 let's, let's, let's focus, let's pause on here. Because Abraham was on the mountain, he brought wood, he had wood, he, he, he gathered some stones together to build the altar. He built the altar, and he was in that vicinity. And you tell me, the thicket was there, but he never saw the ram. He never saw the ram. 
Not until the moment where he was about to kill his son, and then God revealed to him. The Bible said when God saw his faith, he said, don't harm your child. I've already provided. So God has spoken, and now he opened his eyes. He lift up his eyes. What did he do? He lift up his eyes, and then he saw the ram in the thicket. He lift up his eyes. The first thing we have to do when we going up, whether we going up, we coming down, or whether we are down, we have to lift up our eyes. We have to lift up our eyes because the scripture says in Luke 21, uh, verse uh, uh, 28, he says, now, when these things began to happen, look up, look up, lift up your heads because your redemption draw near. When all these things began to happen, where all this turmoil began to happen in the world, where all this pandemic began to happen, where all these killings began to happen, where all these murders began to happen, where all this hatred begins to happen, where all this natural disaster after disasters began to happen, where all this unexplainable uh, disasters and virus of biblical proportions began to happen. He says now you have to lift up your head. Lift up your head because your redemption draw near. Because your help is within reach. So you don't have to lose heart. It's supposed to be a Bible study. It's supposed to go, go easy on the, on the scripture now. You don't have to lose hope. You don't have to lose heart because your redemption is near. Your redemption draw near so the catastrophe comes. But as uh, when, when the catastrophe draw closer, so does the redemption draw. The, so, so God can see the disaster is coming, but he's also right there. He's right there to come close to you. He said, he said, he said, all this disaster is happening, but I'm right there. I'm right there. I'm right there. The disaster that Abraham had to endure, it, it was a disaster. It was a catastrophe to take, to be at a point to sacrifice his son. It is a catastrophe. But so was the presence of God was right there. The provision of God was right there with him. Right there. Right there. But God said, the temptation that you are going through or experiencing right now is not to destroy you. It's not to kill you. I have already provided an answer, a solution. I've already provided an outcome. So, it won't kill you. So, so now draw closer. Come closer. Don't, don't be afraid of the temptation. Go in it. Go in it. Don't be afraid of the fight. Get into it. Get into it. Because how would you know that I'm there if you don't go in there? You have to. Oh, it's, it's scary. But, but, but get in there. Get in the fight. And then you know how strong you are because you're not alone. So, the temptation is not something that you are there all by yourself, but God is in it with you. Somebody said, God is in it with me. He's right there. Psalm 121 verse 2 said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help, my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. You see, Israel is around, surrounded by hills. And so the children of Israel knows the scripture well. He said, lift up our eyes to the hills from where is my help coming from. He, in order for us to get the solution, we have to look up. So lift up your head. Please lift up your heads and open your eyes and look up because your help is not down there. Your help is up. 
So whether you are at the top, you're descending, or you're climbing, or you are at the bottom, you have to look up. No matter where you are in life, whether you are well accomplished, or whether you are sleeping on the street, it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, whether you are trying to accomplish, whether you're trying to build up your business, build up your career, build up your life, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter. You have to look up. You have to look up because your help is not where you're looking right now. Your help is up. So if you and I will begin to look up, we will see the help that we are designing. We have to have eyes that can see. And oftentimes, we can't see because we don't trust God. Abraham was there the mountain operating, but he never saw the ram in the thicket. He never saw the ram. But at the moment where he trusted God, the moment where he was ready to kill his son, the moment where he was ready to sacrifice his son, that's the moment where God said, I saw your faith. Now open your eyes. You open his eyes. He saw it right there. And oftentimes, how often do we pass by uh, the, the solution? The solution that we, that we decide. The answer. Sometimes we pass by the solution every single day, but we can't see it. Have you noticed that in your neighborhood right where you live, sometimes you've been passing by there for years and one day you stop by and like, wait, I never know this store was here. I never know this, these people were here. But you pass by every day, but you never pay attention. We have to pay attention. He said, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, so I can see you. We got this open. God needs to remove the shell from our eyes. He said, come and buy from you all so you can, uh, you can anoint your eyes so you can see me. We, we, we need to see God. When we see God, our demeanor will change. Our attitude will change. Because when we see God, we will become bold. We will become stronger because we know that God is right beside us. And that's why he said, he said here, in John 4, we will be able to help other people. John 4, 35 said, do you, do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look out the fields for they are already white for harvest they are already white for harvest just lift up your eyes there's work to be done so it, it will help you not just to focus on yourself but to shift the focus from yourself to others to get involved in your community to get involved in helping others to get involved because that's the avenue you need to get off. That's where you need to get off. That's where your help is. Your help comes from above, but you, how, how often do you help others? How often do you fulfill the great commission? Where he said, go ye therefore into all the world, preach the gospel, into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, into the uttermost part of the world, and behold, I will be with you. God is a loving God. He's a caring God. He loves people. He wants us to reach out. After that, he reached out to us. He wants us to reach out. He said, open your eyes. There is a field right there waiting for you. Open your eyes. Your solution is not in your sitting there crying. That's not where your solution is. Your solution is not sitting there and have pity party for yourself. Your solution is when you reach out. Your solution is when you reach out to God and when you reach out to your fellow man. That's where your solution is. I wish I could continue today. But I will I'll, I'll stop here. I will continue next time. As we have two more series, two more uh, uh, lessons to go. Actually, there are more, but I will I limit it to two more at a mountaintop. Next time, we'll talk about the mountaintop experience. When you reach the mountain, what do you do, what do, you do? when you made it in life? When, that, when you get all your ducks in a row? When everything is going right? What do you do? Believe it or not, while we are experiencing a, 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 a worldwide pandemic, Right now, there are folks who made it, who are, who are going up. There are folks who are being blessed. I want to tell you something. That 
You can be blessed in the midst of a mess. You can be blessed. I want to help you. If you don't know the God that I'm talking about, I want to give you the opportunity to come and give your heart to the Lord. And it's a simple prayer. Pray this prayer with me. And I want to pray for everybody. After I pray this prayer with you, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. So stick around. I'll pray for everybody. Whatever your need is, you make it known to God. We'll pray in a second. Let's pray first for those that want to give their heart to the Lord. I want to give you the opportunity to surrender your heart, to give your heart, and God will hear your prayer and he will answer you. Pray with me and say, Father, I am a sinner. I need a Savior. Please forgive me all my sins and come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Cleanse me with your blood and thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray this prayer, you are a child of God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. You are a part of the kingdom of God. I want to encourage you to serve God, to become a part of uh, the body of Christ. Find yourself a, a Bible belief in church and, and become part of that church and learn more about Christ. And you can also contact me so that I can lead you into knowing Christ as well. God bless you. Father, thank you. At this very moment as I pray for those under the sound of my voice, I pray that your grace will be upon them. Father, our help is within reach. It's right here. But oftentimes we cannot see it just like Abraham couldn't see the solution. The ram was right there in the thicket and he had to open his eyes to see it. But oftentimes with our natural eyes, we can't see what we're supposed to see, what we ought to see. But if you want to open our eyes, God, please, Father, open our eyes so that we can see the solution in this season, in this time. Father, open our eyes to see the season. Father, we will be less aggravated, uh, less grumpy, less, less uh, fussing. Father, we will see you in your glory, in your majesty, and in your splendor. Open our eyes so that we can see the solution. And when we see the solution, we can walk in, in victory. We can walk in faith. And somebody right now needs your faith, needs some faith, and needs your touch. Father, touch. Touch this person right now. Father, let the healing power begin to flow. That healing power. Where, whatever your, your, your situation is, if you feel sick at this moment, please lay your hands Lay your hands on the spot right now. Wherever it is, lay your hands on the spot right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will touch this person. We command this illness to go in the name of Jesus. We command this pain to disappear. Father, tumor in their body, we command them to disappear. We command every infirmity, spirit of infirmities to leave and to go in Jesus' name. Spirit of destruction, family and generational curses, family bondage. We destroy over them in the name of Jesus. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we release healing. We release deliverance right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for touching somebody. In the name of Jesus. Father, somebody that's going through domestic violence right now, right there at home, we pray in the name of Jesus for a solution. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will bring forth a solution in this situation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. For some reason, while I was praying for people who were, who were, go, who were going through domestic violence, I heard this. Do not stay in that violent situation, but make your way out. Make your way out. Seek for help immediately. Do not stay. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. May God bless you. May God bless your family. And may God bless all the teachers around the world. All of our teachers, they are working hard. And for parents, as you can see that some of you became teachers and principals at the same time. So I pray for you also, all the, the home parents and, and principals, it is not an easy job. 
all the homework and all the online things, things that you don't even know of, like the scripture said, things that you don't even know of on the computer. You have to go through all these sites to help your children. And now, now you see how important teachers are. Teachers are very important. Now you know, now you see what I said. I was saying this for a long time that teachers knows everything. They knows everything. They know everything. And I'll stick to my story. God bless you. God bless your family. And I'll see you again at the next broadcast. Blessings.